Hey guys, I'm S. Dan Wolf, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the Safari Park, and we are pushing our way further into new exhibits, new fun, new rides. Uh, I have to give a big shout out to Coaster Zinger, because you'll see uh, towards the end of the time lapse, and of course, like usual, we'll jump in and do a real time, but towards the end of the time lapse, uh, I was planning on actually starting um, you know, like we said, like a whole roller coaster type cheetah hunt type area, but I think that's going to wait just for now because, um, like I mentioned a second ago, Coaster Zinger said, why don't you try the magic carpet ride? And I thought, yeah, I think that will work out pretty cool. So that is what I essentially ended up doing here. Um, we bring in a magic carpet ride and it essentially just fit perfect with the whole um, Egyptian area, um, it just, uh, like I said, it, when, once you guys see it actually put together and, and themed out, um, I think, I think you'll agree. Um, but this, one of the main focuses that I really tried to work on towards the end of this week was getting this cheetah area worked out and um, it started off a little small like what you see here in this version um, actually in the time-lapse version is a little small but doing a, doing some research I noticed that um, even cheetahs that are enclosed like even the ones that if they have them in you know rehabilitation if they have them in regular zoos whatever they still try to give them long stretches of land so they can you know actually still run so that is one of the first big things that I kind of needed to change around about this that you see, um, or essentially that you don't see, is to give the cheetahs a longer running area. So we kind of have the little cheetah ridge here, and um, we, I guess you can kind of just take this as the area where they just chill. Like this is where they're, see how right now even this little section, see how small it is? Not really a lot of area to run. In the real time, I'll show you where I've kind of moved that path off to out of the way a little bit and have given them kind of like a, kind of like a corridor more more so um, just to give them a little bit of uh, area to stretch their legs and, uh, and and you know kind of take care of them that way so um, just really 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 interesting build um, just kind of looking and researching into that type of stuff more and and what type of stuff they've ha they would have I kind of wanted to give them um, I've, you've noticed I put the vines and stuff in where they can kind of crawl up and climb up their way to the higher tiered rocks so guests could kind of be like almost eye level with them. Um, I thought that was really interesting. And uh, yeah, here's another kind of starting on the uh, the Magic Carpet Ride. Wasn't too sure about it at first. Totally being honest, it is huge. It is a massive, massive footprint. Um, but I think, like I said, with the terraforming that I was able to do and the theming, um, I think it works. It's kind of like, um, look at it, kind of like the coaster over on the other side of the park. I know we don't want to, I know we don't want to beat the archaeology kind of horse, you know, here, but it, um, I think it just fits so well with the whole Cairo theme, um, that I've, uh, I've essentially made it like its own kind of, uh, discovered dig site over here. And we've got the, kind of like the protruding arm right here, and I kind of box it in. Um, you know, like they're kind of supporting it and, and doing their research and and um, and all that stuff around it. So this is essentially the ending area over here for the Egypt area. And I thought, you know, what would be really cool. You see this little tunnel kind of like I'm building here now. Um, now that gorillas and stuff like that are starting to pop up on the uh, on the workshop, um, I think thanks to FSF Ranger. Um, or FSF Ranger, uh, I think that would be cool to like extend the railroad track over and maybe do like a Harambe village uh, type area, um, you know, more of like that side, you know, that type of design. And maybe we can even do it kind of like Animal Kingdom theme it like maybe 1980 like. Uh, you know, 1980s, do like the whole conservation thing over there. Maybe have like a, a, a gorilla type exhibit. And we already know we have the, the chimpanzee set or the chimpanzee guy that um, that Dead Eye Duck put out. Looks really, really cool. Um, some people were even saying maybe do like a chimpanzee island. Um, that would be really, really neat and kind of incorporate it in the whole village area. But the, the, the way these little villages and these little marketplaces, I think they're working out really, really well. 
um, just like the layering that's happening and you really get to transition into these different worlds and the way that we're able to to mimic the animal enclosures and and mix in the rides it's just working out really really awesome I think and uh but like always, let me know your guys' thoughts down below on what other type of land we should try. Like I said, I'm not really taking any suggestions right now for water creatures. Um, because that, I think, we'll maybe hold off until we, like, maybe just do an aquarium type build on that. So we need to be thinking of suggestions that we can give the modelers and what type of animals you guys want to see. Um, even if it comes down, I, I, I would not even put it past to do like um, like an American adventure type area with grizzly bears and deer, um, you know, uh, maybe foxes and coyotes, maybe do a, a, a wolf exhibit if the modelers can work on us some like, um, like maybe gray American wolves. Like we can move on to that. I mean, we've got jungle, we've got Egypt, we've got East Asian. There's nothing that's really hindering our theme um the only thing that's stopping us is the availability of animals and uh you know just kind of seeing what these guys come up with next so yeah maybe like i said if we if we shift over um to the you know if we shift over to that side of the hemisphere and um you know maybe get us some north american and even maybe move into a south american type uh type of village and climate and enclosures and stuff so lots of possibilities we have lots of room left um, I know we need to get a thrill coaster in really wanted to try that but um, other than that let's go ahead and jump into the real time and we will uh, we'll yap about this more and kind of do an overview of the park for any newcomers out there so hold on uh, maybe 1.8 seconds guys <laughs> All right, guys, so here we go. And I think you'll agree that this does not actually look too bad. I think it was a pretty cool little spot for a uh, for a magic carpet ride. So big, like I said, big shout out to Coaster Zinger for, uh, for mentioning this. So now we have a nice little flat ride area to tie in well with our Cairo area. So yeah, see, they kind of, they can make their way through here. They can do all their little shopping. We've got a splash pad. We've got gifts, drinks, bathrooms. We've got the aviary over here, um, kind of off to the right, little walkthrough aviary. Um, and then of course, once they make their way through uh, Mufu T's large, uh, kind of like large gates, they can either make their way over to what will eventually be um, like I said, maybe a chimpanzee Harambe market uh, gorilla type area. And then, of course, over here we've got the, uh, this is kind of like the backstage area for the African elephant uh, exhibit. So I figure maybe we can, you know, I'll eventually work up a little spot over there to where guests can go behind the scenes, maybe go back in um, to like, you know, like the little, um, sort of like the nighttime area, the veterinary services area, um, you know, for the, uh, the little African elephants over here. So yeah, that is uh, that is what is kind of going on with that. And then of course, I've uh, still, got a, still got a little bit of work to do, but um, thanks to Deadeye Duck, I have got some really awesome cheetah models now. I mean, even the way that he's, uh, the way that he's worked out the texture and even the claws kind of come out, the little subtle neck movements. Eyeballs look great, teeth look great, black gums, got the tongue. This, I think, is one of Dead Eye Duck's best models to date. Like, if he keeps that up, the there, there are no limits to what to the way that these animals can look and, and just the, the realism that he's brought into this, was able to bring over really really awesome job on the cheetah and so yeah we've got um you know we've got the lower kind of like the lower sight lines here then of course you can also make your way up the steps and we've got like um you've got like a little bit more of a uh, of a right on site like i figured like the cheetahs and stuff would be up here they'd be lounging around on these rocks or maybe out on this edge kind of lounging around in the sun and then you as a guest um, could essentially, you know, be standing right here up against this fence railing 
and you could just sit here and watch them. Now, um, another part, like I said, during the time lapse, um, they can make their way. It's not a large area, but they can make their way under this path. Um, which you know will bridge out and everything and um, they can they have a little bit of running room um, kind of over here in this area and what we always say about like as far as this part goes and these areas sharing spines um, like you know as far as the backstage area goes so if you're new um, this kind of like these mountains form these spines of different areas of different shopping areas so like on this side right here you have the Cairo area but on the other side of the, of the spine, you have the East Asian area. So see, and then uh, also if you're new, this is a, uh, this is kind of like the, the little tiger exhibit down here. So these are, these are dead eye ducks, tigers. And see what I mean by like the way he did the cheetah compared to the tiger. See how the tigers kind of has like a little bit of a shine. You don't see that furry texture. And then, well, you do see it a little bit underneath his, underneath on around his chin. But compare his tiger to his cheetah. He has worked this out just perfect. And he's even told me that 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 that, that tiger design is a really early design. Um, he's he's working on some other poses, some other things. So, you know, the animals. They, I mean, he he messages me well, like we're, um, you know, he messages me on. Um, Discord a lot through his progress throughout the week and, and kind of what he comes up with and uh, him and Miss Red Nebula kind of keep keep me updated on a lot of stuff they're working on and uh, truly amazing stuff coming down the pipeline. We are just at the tip of the iceberg as far as the animals and stuff that are coming and, and different things they are working on. Uh, here's a little queue area to the magic carpet ride. And another thing too, I was gonna ask you guys to, um, you can just leave it down in the comments section, but what should we call this? So give me a name. And uh, if, you know, if, if we can come up with a cool name here, I will put up a little, some kind of little, uh, you know, entrance sign. Maybe we'll do it up here on the, on these, uh, on the wood pillars. But yeah, the, uh, the carpet ride needs some kind of name. So, uh, yeah, there's like, like I said, a lot of little nitpicky work left to do in the Cairo area. I need to finish out these facades, um, you know, finish out some shops, um, you know, over here on the uh, sides of the uh, the Cairo market, kind of like the old de facto um, uh, Zanzibar Trading Company facade. So we've got the Cairo Trading Company, and uh, you know, got to finish, uh, got to do a lot more work on the path, make it safe, put a lot of. Uh, you know, we got got a lot of fencing work left to do. Um, you know, got to finish up on the cheetah area, but um, it is coming along, guys. Like I said, it's going to be really neat to kind of see what I can do as far as the uh, you know, as far as our safari train line goes here. Um, I don't I, like. I, I want it to not end right here with this little roundabout is kind of like this little teardrop i want it to uh, extend out over here to what i think so is, is initially probably going to be the harambe type market so i think that would be really cool to have some really neat uh path interaction with the train but still make it to where you know like people can't just walk right out in front of the train or little kids and stuff so you know this eventually will be breaking off to make its way through the village and then you know the teardrop will probably be more you know more up here in this corner and then make its way back to the safari so you know essentially once i you know flesh this out a little more the the train ride won't be so just you know egregiously short here it, it'll be you know it, it'll it'll definitely um, it'll definitely be worth your time to wait in line so um, a couple of people even asked me too about um, are there going to be more animals for the planes or you know for the safari out here and definitely like I think one thing we can get away with is uh, we could probably put so we could probably put so a little rhinoceros herd out here um, that is you know you typically see that but they um, like Disney Animal Kingdom does it in a, in a neat way where they kind of separate them from some of the other animals but they do it naturally and I think that's what we'll do because obviously you wouldn't want like a baby zebra or in this case you wouldn't want a baby giraffe kind of wandering into the rhino area. 
Um, you know, I guess, you know, typically, especially in, 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 uh, in captivity, they seem uh, pretty docile, but I wouldn't put it past like a large rhinoceros. Um, you know, kind of just like hippos maybe getting agitated and, you know, maybe charging a small uh, small giraffe or even a, you know, even a normal sized uh, zebra. So I think, you know, we can have the, uh, the rhinos out here, but we will probably need to kind of barrier them off a little bit. Um, as far as the other, like as far as the hooved animals, you know, like the, uh, as far as the, the regular herds here go, um, definitely want to get some more animals out. And Miss Red Nebula, I think she is working on different types of, uh, different types of hooved animals and such. So, you know, all of that stuff is coming and we are making some pretty fun progress, don't you guys think? I think this is a, this is working out pretty cool, especially where, um, you know, I, I've totally, remember, I've dismantled the little Main Street entrance area right here. So now that, like I said, we've practiced and done, done so much better on our on our, uh, our facades and building designs, like I need to get a cool little main street here going instead of just like the path leading up to the hippo enclosure uh, like it was before. So yeah, we will uh, we'll get on that in one of these episodes coming up. But for right now, I'm kind of just focusing on the enclosures and, um, and you know, just all what, what we can make happen kind of with, uh, you know, with the different animals that are coming on. But another thing I wanted to kind of touch on in this episode too is check this out. I've merged two of my blueprints. Remember the old Wilderness Springs, uh, like the Wilderness Springs stage and my adventure stage? So yes, now here in the Safari Park, we have a live action stage show. So think Indiana Jones adventure, you know, that is kind of what I thought would be really cool over here. So um, yeah, that is, that, that is what is the product of uh, merging these two buildings. So we've got the little backstage area I kind of need to do a little work on and uh, and bring that up you know kind of bring that up to bring that up to level and get that little staff area uh, connected but yeah I thought that would be pretty cool so that I needed something for that area didn't know if I would end up doing an enclosure over there you know any like as far as that goes but I think it worked out pretty good just to have the have the stage over there we've kind of got the the, uh, the stage kind of anchoring the background of the coaster and this this whole little area down through here I think just worked out really really well with that stage and this is one of my earlier exhibits I actually uh, have no animals in I don't even know what this was gonna be um, but yeah we will get some, maybe we'll get some kind of animal over here maybe if we get a I don't even know maybe some uh, meerkats or something we'll get them some um, like some different little wood pieces to crawl across and some ropes strung up and um, I think that would be pretty cool and yeah so like I said I know that there's a lot of new people coming on uh, to this build and um, so it, you know let's just we'll give everybody a rundown and and some of you veteran people can kind of um, give your thoughts in the comments down below and uh, we can get some new people in and get them to uh, get their thoughts on this new uh, on this uh, kind of like revamped safari park. And like I've said before, big thanks to, um, you know, uh, Mass Bandit and Jaunty for their Uzuri Garden build um, has helped me. It's just been instrumental for just kindling the like kindling the fire for the for the planet safari planet zoo type area um somebody commented last time that the hippo enclosure is way way too small um i tend to agree so maybe what we'll do is um sometimes we can you know like all of this park kind of has the uh kind of like the under park like the utilidor type area we're going with and they can actually move the animals kind of in and out of here so I figured like maybe eventually we could get like a larger um, hippo enclosure going. But for right now, I think it works really well. Like people walking by and the shops and the eating. And this was my first enclosure ever. Like when I first decided to come in and try a Planet Safari type build, um, it was a little bit after we got the, uh, the adventure pack. And so yeah, that's what I did. I built a hippo enclosure. So that was first. Um, over here, we've got like the little jumbo house, the little welcome house. Um, if you move out this way, if you're really new, 
all of this over here, the tiger enclosure and what I hope to be the panda enclosure, this was all underwater. This was a big shark exhibit. It was essentially a uh, shark lagoon. So now, um, just to bring in, a, just to make the story a little more cohesive, I've made this a big nature center. And um, yeah, so the tigers and all that, um, they like this is the this is the whole East Asian area now. We've got a little restaurant. Um, we've got some little fake facades and little shops over here. And uh, yeah, we just really needed something a little better over here. The the sharks just weren't doing it for me. They were looking um, they were looking pretty pretty out of place uh, as far as you know the rest of the park goes. Um, so yeah, decided to bring in the tigers and then actually you guys, um, some of the people that have been following the series for a while said, oh, if it's tigers, you should make it like an East Asian type area. And uh, that's exactly what we did. So sharks out, tigers in. And then if you peel off over here to the left just a little bit, um, you kind of come across this little bit of a snack type court area but then you run over here into the reptile house so yeah you can kind of they're filming a little show down here and you can make your way inside here and uh yeah we've got all kinds of little uh little exhibits going on for all of your little reptiles but um you know they are that is a, a very, very sensitive animals, very sensitive type of habitat. So um, essentially that will have to be implied. So yeah, you can make your way in there, inside there to, uh, to see the animals. So let's kind of, we will peel back this way a little bit and let's show everybody the, uh, the Croc Cove. So this is like an abandoned type uh, temple that is guarded by these massive saltwater crocodiles that kind of guard here at the base of this temple. And these were, uh, this was the second enclosure uh, that I actually did because remember we got not only the hippos with the adventure pack, but we got these awesome, awesome crocs. So the guests can kind of make their way above the crocs a little bit. We've got my old uh, food truck that I built right when the uh, when the adventure pack come out really really happy with how that turned out but yeah you can kind of make your way across the uh, across the cove here as it is and you've got the, the little zoologist down here and stuff answering people's questions and if you catch it um, at the right time of day um, we actually have a, some feeding going on over here so this is kind of like the uh, the croc feeding platform so yeah, that is, uh, you know, every so often you can kind of come out here on this edge and watch the crocs be fed. Got some crocs over here kind of basking, and they can make their way under this walkway, of course, and, uh, and out into the water. And then right here, I've kind of essentially made it to where if we, ha if, if we had some crocs that needed some extra attention or if we needed to separate them because of issues, um, these are like you could have gates right here that would separate them um, over here into this lagoon. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of like the, uh, that's the area of this separation. Like I said, it, it just if any issues uh, were to arise with the crocs. And then over here, um, it's kind of like the underwater, uh, you know, waterline viewing area. And this is one of their little beaches right here. So then, yeah, looking, uh, looking a little north here, we've got, whoops, we've got um, the park's first coaster. Uh, which does not have a name yet, but still had a lot of fun building actually a couple episodes ago This is the second iteration because uh, I had accidentally lost my save For the original coaster that sat here, but it's still come out pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy with it um, This is another little uh, shopping area kind of up here Well, I guess what we'll do first is before we go into that area. Let's just talk about the safari tour so yeah, you can stop up here and get your tickets and then make your way down here to the depot. And um, for anybody that's new, these trucks don't actually move. Um, this is all implied, so these trucks are not animated. They cannot move. But yeah, so this is kind of like my Kilimanjaro, um, kind of like a loading platform uh, safari uh, depot area. And then we've got the extra little trucks up here. And from here is where the trucks go underneath the, uh, the bridge here and make their way out into the safari. So um, this, this bridge is what takes you past the safari depot and essentially up here into kind of like the jungle market. And this is a, a really neat area, really, really proud of it. Put a, spent a lot of time um, just getting these facades right. 
Um, you can, you know, like you can get your hair braided over here. They've got all kinds of different little shops and restaurants, just like Cairo. And um, it's it's a really, really narrow, tight passage. Really, really fun, fun build. And uh, over here, I brought in Ollie 414's water slides and kind of making them. I've made them just makeshift regular slides right here. Um, the kids can kind of come sliding down on. And then um, kind of anchoring the back of the shopping area is Mwanga's. It's like a, it's kind of like my... Uh, my jungle steakhouse essentially um so yeah that is kind of the back part of there and then um kind of overlooking the like this little shopping area lets you overlook the safari so yeah the trucks kind of take you out and you meander out all through the plains and um and uh, just you know we've got the giraffes out here courtesy of dead eye duck we've got miss red nebula's awesome zebras over here got the little zebra herd and uh, one of the things we need to work on is uh, definitely need to get over here and start working on. I'm, I know I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of space limited right now as far as this not being like a scenario map or anything. But we need to get to working on the train station. Um, we need to start. We need to finish on the little uh, the depot section. You know where they can service the, uh, the, the the steam trains and all that. And then of course right here is the backstage area. Um, kind of like the, um, the the veterinary area for the plains animals. So, you know, they if they need to uh, have their checkups or any kind of medical attention, they can bring them in here and kind of quarantine them, weigh them, work on them. All of that kind of uh, kind of sits right here. And this, this, this whole area right here is our big kind of like Serengeti type uh, plains. And then another exhibit that kind of overlooks the plains is our African elephant exhibit so yes dead eye duck has uh, knocked it out of the park completely with his awesome little uh, elephant models he was able to bring in uh, i think he was even telling me he was able to bring in some models from from zoo tycoon um, and they ended up working really really well textures came over really well um, a lot of you guys were commenting on we need babies to make it a little more realistic so he even brought us in a, a little baby model worked out really really cool and uh, yeah, so, and like we started off, where we'll leave off is the African Cairo area. And uh, so yeah, guys, I will go ahead and leave you here. I know I've kept you here for like 30 minutes now, but uh, I thought it was a good, good episode to kind of give everybody a big rundown. Uh, maybe people that are new here to our little zoo experiment. And uh, yeah, so like always, leave me your thoughts down below on just what you think of all this, um, some new ideas. Like I said, i definitely listen. If, um, if Coaster Zinger would have just went on and not thought to type in uh, Magic Carpet Ride, I about 99.8% guarantee that this would not have been there. Um, so yeah, just like I said, let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to smash that like button if you end up enjoying this video and subscribe for more Planet Coaster content. And yes, thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me. And I will catch you in the next video. Thank you. See you guys.